Hey everybody, I am back with part number two of the little series I'm doing, uh, introducing you to each person in my family. I'm starting out with my children, and I have four of them, and uh, after that, I don't know who I'll go to. I haven't thought that far ahead of time, but... Um, there was something I forgot to tell about Autumn that I wanted to real quick say. Uh, one thing is she's very loving and tender-hearted. And if she knows somebody needs something or is hurting or anything like that, she's there to do what she can. And growing up, she was my kitty girl. She loved kittens. And um, I'll always remember that about her. And so that's sad about her. And, and uh, uh, I'm going to move on now to Holly. And Holly was born in 1981 in December and she will be um, you know my brain just is not working how old she will be uh, if this is two, 24 and she was born in 81. Would that make her 43? I don't know. You're going to have to do the math because I sure can't. Sometimes the easiest things just, I just can't grasp them. And this math without a pencil and paper, I just can't figure it out. But uh, Holly always laughs at me because I will call her on all these different dates around her birthday and sing the happy birthday song and holler happy birthday and it's not her birthday uh, her birthday is on december 23rd and i just get mixed up so uh we have a good laugh about that but she like i say was born december 23rd 1981 I was going to name her Chesley Adair, and I had that name picked out the whole time I was pregnant with her, and then I went in the hospital, uh, I believe it was the same, yeah, it was the same day she was born, because when I did go to the hospital, I just felt a little funny, but there was no, not the first labor pain. And I got to the hospital and I was dilated nine. And uh, the doctors and all were running around, we're gonna get you out of this pain soon and all. And I'm laying there thinking, what pain? I could have a baby every day of the week if it was this simple. But then I remembered the pain from autumn and I knew it wasn't that simple, but she was what you call sunny side up. <clears throat> and so I had to get off of the stretcher. And they had put me in the ER back on just a stretcher and had me to labor there instead of putting me in a room. And I was just on a stretcher, like the kind that if you go in an ambulance, you know, those kind of real mattresses, real thin, uh, hard mattress. Uh, that's what I was on one of those. And so I went to the uh, emergency room that morning, and she was born just within an hour of me going to the ER. And she was a beautiful baby. I remember when I had her, my doctor 
was, had just delivered her and I was laying there with my head back on the stretcher and he said, do you want to look at her? I guess I just didn't even realize, you know, that I could look at her. And so I raised my head up and I looked at her and I thought, what a cute little chunker. She was eight pounds, 14 ounces. And uh, just a really uh, beautiful baby. The only thing is she was my only child with no hair. And uh, she even had less hair than a peach. But it grew in, and uh, she's always had nice, beautiful hair since then. But um, when I got pregnant with her, I was on uh, the birth control pill. And Holly always felt like, for some reason, she wasn't wanted because she was on a birth control pill. Well, in my opinion, when you have a, a uh, something going against you, like the birth control pill, and you make it through that, and you come out, uh, I know what I'm trying to say, that it sure is not sounding right. When you, when you have an obstacle, and you overcome that obstacle, which is what happened with Holly. She had the obstacle of me being on birth control and she was born anyway. To me, that shows how much more you were loved and wanted because here you are. And I wouldn't take the world for her. She is so funny and all my kids are funny. They have their own special funny bone. Their humor is not all the same. Uh, one has a sense of humor in one way and another has a sense of humor in another way. And um, anyway, if you, Holly and I started a channel back a couple years ago at least and it was called review stars s-t-a-r-z is how we spelled stars and we're reviewing mostly food but it is so funny and if you go look at we don't have but maybe maybe a dozen probably not even a dozen videos but you can see Holly's sense of humor if you go there and look uh, at what we're doing. And people have asked us to, to start that channel back up. And I would love to. And Holly says she would love to. But there's some things Holly's got to do on her end to get things going. And until she does, you know... I'm stuck. So, uh, if you look at those videos and you like them, and I'll, I'll tell Holly to read in the comments if you'd like for us to get started back with that. Maybe that'll give, give her that little lift that she needs. But anyway, you know, I can ramble with the best of them. But uh, anyway, for six years, I believe it was, I was uh, in between husbands. And so Holly and Autumn both went to school and they also went to a daycare while I went to beauty school. And um, um, then Holly, well, Autumn was already in school. Holly started school, and uh, she did well in school. I think she liked school more than Autumn did. 
but I don't think she was a lover of school. But uh, she made good grades, and I, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, she graduated before her class did because she went to the college here and went ahead and got what classes she needed done and then she took more classes college classes and um, in the meantime she had this really sweet boyfriend named Mike and as a matter of fact he is still part of our family today even though they didn't marry uh, he's still just one of the family nicest guy that you'd ever want to meet and uh holly and him had a baby who was cree and um, um we would go visit him all the time because i wanted to see my grandbaby and um eventually they broke up and Holly went to work at a little diner restaurant, kind of like what you'd think of Flo um, from, what is the name of that show, where they say, Kiss My Grits. Well, Holly was uh, Flo at that diner because she had um, set down somebody's plate uh, usually there was a lot of men, construction workers and stuff that would come out there and eat. And she'd set their plate down of food and she'd look at them and, you know, they'd say thank you or whatever. And she'd go, don't choke on it. And she'd turn around and walk off. Of course, they knew that she was just trying to be funny. And she was usually pretty funny, but... And thank goodness she never said that to the wrong person. But um, Holly is very big-hearted and tender-hearted, too. And several years ago, she uh, her birthday came. And, you know, she could have asked for anything. And probably from her boyfriend uh, gotten whatever she wanted and um, that makes me look cheap and I don't mean it that way I just mean if you want something really special and big usually your boyfriend gets it for you or that's what I think anyway but her her uh, her birthday came and she told me that what she wanted from her for her birthday was to take lotions and powder and baby wipes and excuse me all kinds of things like that <sighs> toiletries and make gift bags and give them to the homeless so I helped her try to gather up some of that and then she had a friend who worked for an airline and she was able to get a lot of that top thing from the airline lady and so we went to um, the Salvation Army one night at uh, supper time and the people came in and they ate and so she and I stood there, and Holly uh, would hand them a gift bag and speak to them a minute and all that. And that was so heartwarming and touching that I could raise my kid up to be uh, giving like that. That just is such a blessing. And... Uh, I'm really proud of all my kids and the people that they have become. And Holly is a loves to entertain, and she 
can cook a little. Over the years, she's gotten much better, but we used to joke that that poor girl could scorch water. And uh, now she cooks Thanksgiving and Christmas meals, these big meals with all this different food. And uh, she makes spaghetti that I absolutely crave. I love it. It's so good. And um, uh, she just is a, a really good cook. And Autumn is more of a country top southern cook and holly is a little bit more out there kind of cook making things that uh are a little more different if that makes sense and holly has two children cree adair now this is cree's name Cree Adair Bertha Bass. And Cree is the name that Holly chose for her. And she told me recently why she named her Cree, but now I don't remember. And then Adair is because, I, if you remember in the beginning, I said I was going to name Holly Chesley Adair. Well, Holly really liked that name and said she wishes that I would have named her that instead of Holly Noel. But Holly was born two days before Christmas, and so I named her Holly Noel. But because she liked the name uh, Adair in that name, she named Cree. Cree Adair Bertha because that was my middle name until I married, and I dropped it but I kept saying and joking that it, I didn't care what she named the baby I was still going to call her Bertha so out of uh, out of a little respect not respect but uh, just because my name had been Bertha and she wanted to make me proud I guess might be the way to say it that I had a great great baby I'm sorry my emotions are just all over the place that I had a great baby named after me and uh, so Cree and Air Bertha Mass that kind of flows and I bet that Cree can't wait till she gets married so that she can drop that Bertha. But uh, my mom let her mom name me. And what I think is so funny about that is my mom, <coughs> excuse me, had thought about naming me Janice. Now, I don't. I think Janice is not a unique name, but I think it's a name around here that you don't hear too often. And so my grandma, not having talked to my mom, picked the name Janice. But I don't know what middle name my mom picked, but my grandma named me after herself which was Bertha, so I am, uh, my name, if you put my uh, name from my first marriage and everything together, my maiden name and all, my name is Janice Bertha Glassbook Bass Croissant, and that's a mouthful, but uh, Holly is with a really great guy, and she said this year they're going to get married, and they have talked a little bit about having another child, but at her age, I feel like the door has been shut and locked, 
if there was a chance of her getting pregnant, because they talk about wanting a baby, if there was a chance of her getting pregnant, I feel like that time has passed, and there's not much there to work with on that. But if she would get pregnant and she wants a baby, then that's great. Uh, I have no problem with it. Like, even if I did, it wouldn't matter, but I don't. The only thing I feel about it is they, they go to Las Vegas a lot, and they go to Florida. They go here, they go there. They do a lot of fun things. And, you know, a baby can really tie you down for a while, so they'll think it all through and do what's best for them. And that's all you can ask for. But um, I believe I told you, Holly's got a big heart. And when I've been sick several times, she's brought me like spaghetti or this or that, like Autumn. I don't want to say autumn didn't because autumn did also but uh you know when you're sick boy if somebody brings you a meal that is such a big help but um holly works she, uh doing something with cigarettes and i told my friend that I was going to have to start smoking so that I could get free cigarettes, but there'd probably be a loophole where I couldn't get them. But I quit smoking like 25 years ago, so this wouldn't be a good time to pick up that habit. But Holly works really hard uh, and is out there. Uh, she goes from store to store, con like convenience stores, I don't think she goes to regular stores, but she has something to do uh, with restocking, and that's really all I can tell you. I don't know that much about it. And then Holly has a little boy, and his name is Presley, and I know I knew at one time his middle name, but now... For the life of me, I can't think of it. But Presley is a real handsome little guy. And him and uh, Kaywin are just about identical in age. And Kaywin is my youngest. And so they're uh, uh, 13. Isn't that terrible? I can't even remember the age. It's 12 or 13. Um, pretty sure it's 13. I don't know. Y'all know how I am. But I'm proud to call Holly my daughter. I'm proud of the person that she is. I'm proud that she's the mother that she is and loves her children like a mama bear and would do anything for them and uh, they're lucky to have her. Trent, who is Holly's boyfriend, fiance, is lucky to have her. I'm lucky to have her as a daughter. I'm lucky to have all my kids as, as my kids. But anyway, I guess that's it. Until I hang up here, I can't remember anymore. And then I'll remember a bunch probably. So um, I'll go here. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Holly. She's a, a stinker. And I love y'all. Don't forget, do something kind for somebody and also something kind for yourself. 
and there's a lot of things you can do. So get outside your comfort zone, get outside your box, and figure out something that you can do that will maybe make you a little uncomfortable, but after it's all said and done, you have this really blessed feeling in your whole being that you have made a difference for someone and a good difference and a loving difference and a difference that makes God so proud of you. You know, I'm real proud of my kids and God's real proud of his kids, which is you and me. So always remember that and take care of yourself and hopefully I'll be back tomorrow and we're going to talk about Caleb, my only boy. So till tomorrow, I love every one of you. Have a great evening and a great day and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.